morning, everybody. Good morning, it's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Gym leaders are meant to serve as the eight major tests of strength for any trainer on their way to the Pokemon League. So, why are so many of them so gosh darn bad at their jobs? There are people in the McDonald's drive-thru who take their profession more seriously than these gym leaders do. And today, I am exposing each and every one of them for the frauds that they really are. But JPR, you might be saying, shouldn't the worst gym leader be a really easy thing to find? Aren't you just going to pick the first gym leader from every region? An astute question, my dear viewers, and the answer to that is no. But it's possible. What I look for in a bad gym leader is one who really doesn't know how to utilize their type to their fullest potential by not accounting for weaknesses, or gym leaders who simply don't have a good ace Pokemon to carry them. Take a look at Brock and Misty, for example. Yes, they're the first two gym leaders of their region, but Brock's Onyx is a massive obstacle of Pokemon Yellow, and Misty has to star me in every game she's in. Possibly one of the hardest early game Pokemon to fight against. Even in Let's Go, where it has Scald? Isn't this game for the children? So, no, first gym leaders are not an automatic lock. If anything, I'm probably going to be more strict against the later gym leaders because, quite frankly, they should know better. And it's worth noting, if a gym leader appears in multiple games, then I'll just have to average their fights together to find the overall worst. And for the sake of simplicity, we're talking about each gym leader's first fight in the games where they are battleable before the post-game. So, no Hort Gold and Soul Silver Kanto gym leaders, no Black Toon White 2 World Tournament teams, and no rematches in general, just to close off any loopholes. So starting us off in Kanto, because where else? The first gym leader I turned to was Blaine, because having a team with two unevolved Pokemon at level 40 is not a great look. But surprisingly, Pokemon Yellow and Let's Go both turn him into kind of a boss. In these games, all of his Pokemon are fully evolved. Well, Magmortar doesn't exist in Let's Go, just go along with it. But when I looked at the very next gym leader, I was pretty appalled at what I saw. Yes, you heard right, I'm talking about Giovanni. In Red and Blue, as well as Fire Red and Leaf Green, he is downright terrible for an 8th gym leader. Virtually no coverage on any of his Pokemon who are known for having great move pools. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, his Rhydon even gets nerfed down to a Rhyhorn because, oh no, kids can't fight against a Pokemon with two double weaknesses, how are they gonna win? And while his movesets are substantially improved in Let's Go, he still doesn't have a ton of great options against water types. Though I appreciate him having Mega Horde on two Pokemon that deal with grass types, even though almost all of them in Kanto are part poison, so it doesn't really mean that much. But Giovanni's saving grace is yellow, where he actually is just as terrifying as he hypes himself up to be. Both of his Nidos carry Thunder for water types, four of his Pokemon have Earthquake, Rhydon is a scary high level 55, and Persian serves as a great wildcard Pokemon. Had Ash fought this version of Giovanni instead of Jesse and James, I don't know if he was ever getting that 8th badge. So the real pick for Kanto is Erika. Despite having an entire team of fully evolved Pokemon, well, at least prior to the introduction of Tangrowth, her team is really not as impressive as it looks. They're all virtually useless against flying, poison, and fire type Pokemon who show up in spades in the Kanto region. And in Pokemon Yellow, she's pretty much the only gym leader to get hard nerfed. Keeping her in line with her anime incarnation, her Vile Plume gets devolved into a Gloom. And her level spike certainly isn't on par with the rest of Kanto's gym leaders. In fact, with the sole exception of Let's Go where her Vile Plume knows Moonblast, in every Kanto-based game, she only ever uses moves that are Grass, Poison, and Normal type. She just has way too many weaknesses to be playing around with move pools that bad. Surge has a similar problem with coverage, but at least that Raichu poses a threat with its incredibly powerful attacks. Moving into Johto, while it's easy to clown these guys for their remarkable lack of Pokemon diversity and having mostly Kanto Pokemon, you have to admit these guys are pretty stout. With aces like Scyther, Miltank, Gengar, and Kingdra, we can safely say that this squad is pretty up to code. So with that being said, who sticks out like a sore thumb? Well, as much as I would love to say Faulkner for his horribly underwhelming team, Pidgeotto is kind of wild to have at such a low level, and again, I can't hold him to the same standard as later gym leaders. Which is why my pick for this region is Price. His Pokemon themselves aren't half bad. As far as ice types go, aside from Jinx, this is probably the best lineup he could have had in Gen 2. But where the ice cracks is in his movesets. Neither Seal nor Dugong carry a single water type move to deal with fire type foes. And Piloswine is flat out embarrassing regardless of the generation. In Gen 2, it doesn't have a single ground-type attack, and it has to rely on Ice despite how low this Pokémon's special attack stat is. And in Gen 4, despite Ice no longer being a special type, they still keep Blizzard in its moveset! And while it finally has a ground-type move, it's Mud Bomb! The only way this thing could feasibly give your team trouble is if it sets up Hail and just abuses Evasion with Snow Cloak, but also, if that happens, you were just flat-out unprepared. 
Even solo Meganium users should have no problem tackling this thing, and that's saying something. In the Hoenn region, it's hard for our pick to be anybody but Watson. This guy's teams are flat out terrible in both Ruby and Sapphire and the remakes. It's as easy as having a single ground type. You do that, you'll win. No problem. Even Ash swept this guy in the anime, which never happens. Yes, I know Anapoke fans, Pikachu was supercharged because it came into contact with the Mecha Raikou and that's why the battle was so easy. Yes, I watched the episode, leave me alone. Now, I know Emerald Watson is a considerable step up compared to his other two incarnations, as simply adding Manetric to the squad makes it an infinitely tougher fight. But even then, I'd still say Watson is arguably the worst of all the Hoenn gym leaders solely for his lack of coverage. If you roll up to Watson's gym with a little bit of pocket sand, you will ruin this guy's entire week. Yes, Miniature can set up with Roar and launch off some pretty decently strong quick attacks, but again, if you let that happen, that's on you. Get your Marsh Stomp, get your Graveler, bada bing, bada boom, you should be done in three minutes. This guy is just waiting out his days until retirement and then he can finally start collecting social security. That's all he's here for. Okay, so Sinnoh is maybe the only region where the first gym leader is a feasible choice. Because every gym leader gets a pretty massive upgrade in both Platinum and BDSP, except Rourke. Across every game, the only major change is that he gets Bulldoze on his Kranidos in the remakes, but like, just use Headbutt, it's gonna do more damage anyway. Also, this has to do more with Sinnoh starters than him, like, yeah, all three of them should just wipe the squad out. Yes, Kranidos looks threatening with base 125 attack at level 14, but all you gotta do is tank one hit as Piplup or Turtwig, not flinch, and then just hit it back and you win. Or if you have Chimchar, it should be a Monferno by now, just use Mach Punch and it's GG. But you know, with bad RNG, this fight could feasibly go wrong for Piplup or Turtwig users, ironically the two types who are supposed to beat Rourke. So you could also give it to Byron. What can I say? Talent does not run in this family. Back to the mines with you, people. While his Steelix puts in a bit of work and runs Thunderfang for coverage, and Bronzor actually whips out a pretty interesting Trick Room strategy in BDSP, it's not enough. Bastiodon is just a terrible ace, and although they tried to cook with its moveset in the remakes, they forgot that it has less special attack than a newborn baby. So even your water type should be shrugging off those Thunderbolts with ease. I'm sorry, you just can't have a defensive Pokemon as an ace if you're a gym leader. You will lose the War of Attrition against the player 10 times out of 10. The more I think about it, the more I would say it's Byron because you could at least feasibly lose to Rourke with bad luck. With Byron? Has anybody ever lost to Byron? Anyone? Ever? Actually, don't comment. If you have lost, then you will probably get trolled in the comments and the feds will definitely take your trainer card away. Unova is certainly a hard one to pin down though. I mean, even Berg, a bug type gym leader, poses a decent threat in challenge mode as Lee Vanny carrying Aerial Ace to deal with Pig Knight and other bug types who may prove problematic. Marlin is maybe a little bit of a flop by 8th gym leader standards as he doesn't carry any ground type moves to deal with electric types and only has man time to deal with grass types in challenge mode. But even then, it's hard to say that he's worse than Bryson. Sure, Bryson unfortunately doesn't get the benefit of challenge mode helping him out, since he's retired from his gym leader position in Black 2 and White 2. But even if normal Black and White had a challenge mode, I don't think he'd be any better. Because these are literally the <laughs> only ice types available in Unova outside of Kyurem, who I highly doubt they'd add to his team. Actually, more than highly doubt. They just wouldn't. And unfortunately for Bryson, Unova ice types are terrible. Vanillish, meh, Cryogonal, dies to literally any physical attack in the game, and Bertic, yeah, like Byron, you can't have a slow, tanky Pokemon as an ace. Especially one with that many weaknesses. I'll give him credit for running Brine at least, but as slow as Bertic is, I doubt he'll even get to use it in most scenarios. And maybe worst of all, because Bryce is a show for Big TM, he can't even use Ice Beam. He has to run Frost Breath on everything, which is only 40 base power in Gen 5. When you put the puzzle pieces together, it becomes much more apparent why he gave this up for an acting career. He was stuck in the wrong line of work. Moving into Kalos, there are certainly many gym leaders who we could expose as the worst. Romo certainly comes to mind because, hey, when making these lists, what grass type gym leader doesn't come to mind? But honestly, between acrobatics and his jump cloth to deal with bugs and bulldoze and his go goat for fire types, he does have options. It's certainly not the best team in the world, but he is at least somewhat prepared. Karina also earns a dishonorable mention for the fact that two of her three Pokemon, including her ace Halucha, aren't even able to touch Ghost-type Pokemon. I feel like as a fighting gym leader, you gotta be better prepared than that. But if you don't have a Ghost-type, then yeah, Halucha is pretty threatening. But for the second straight generation, the worst gym leader title goes to our ice user, Wolfric. Okay, honestly, with Bryson, I can at least say, you know what, you tried. 
You only had three ice types in the entire region to work with, and you did what you could. With Wolfric, man did not try at all. There are 12 fully evolved ice types in the Kalos Pokedex, and with the sole exception of Delibird, he probably chose the worst possible three. Abomasnow is a walking fire hazard, and for some reason only carries these three moves. No Earthquake, no Bulldoze, nothing. Cryogonal, we already touched on why you're trash, but explain to me what exactly you're doing. Sure, Flash Cannon beats rock types, and that's it. That's all you got. But who, boy, Avalog, this is the real kicker. What have we said the last two generations? You can't have a bulky Pokemon with a lot of weaknesses as your ace. Well, Avalug is the worst possible iteration of that. Not only is he a pure Ice-type tank, but he's only a physical tank. His special defense is paper thin. It's not an exaggeration to say that Ember could one-hit KO this Pokemon. <gasps> this Pokemon is hot garbage, like worse than Beartick somehow. Why are you running Crunch? Are you scared of Psychic types? Why? Like, sure, Delphox exists, but no Delphox in the world is getting hit by a crunch where it can just tap you lightly with its wand. This is the same reason why I have no respect for Gita. You guys are trying to cook with a block of ice. That's not how cooking works. Please stop using this garbage Pokemon! Anyway, Alola has no gym, so I can take this moment to calm down from my Avalug rant and also remind you to subscribe to the channel. We're almost at a quarter million subscribers, and most people watching these videos aren't subscribed, so I would really appreciate it if you did. In Sword and Shield, we have a pretty clear-cut answer, and surprisingly, it's not Melanie or her son who both use very bad Pokemon and very bad types. But I will say, Gordy, you are on thin ice with that shuckle, my boy. No, like in Unova, this also goes to someone who really should have retired long before they actually did. Opal. Opal carries a Galarian Weezing with maybe the worst three moves I have ever laid eyes on, a Mawile, which speaks for itself, a Togekiss, which doesn't even have Serene Grace, and an Alchemy that can only attack with one max move. And that is its signature type of Fairy. So if you have a Pokemon that simply resists Fairy, this ace Pokemon is probably the easiest one on the team to take down. And for Galar especially, I would argue that the Dynamax Pokemon carries much more weight than the traditional Gym Leader Ace. So if you flub your Dynamax, you're in trouble. The only thing she can maybe get you with are the three trick questions she delivers during the match, which will lower your Pokemon stats. But if you're replaying the game, you shouldn't get got a second time, unless you have the attention span of, a. Uh, TikTok obsessed Zoomer, so ooh, maybe you guys will be screwed. Good luck out there. For Scarlet and Violet, this was certainly the hardest part of the video because I couldn't even remember the gym leader's names at first, so googling them took a while. Except for Larry, he's so cool. But we'll do a quick run through. Katie is a first gym leader and a bug type gym leader, so the odds are significantly stacked against her, but all things considered, she's not that bad. Double Kick on Nimble at least deals with rock types, and a Terra Bug Teddy Urso with Fury Cutter is kind of scary for this early in the game, not gonna lie. Brassius' team is slightly less impressive, but having Sudowoodo with Rock Throw to deal with all four of Grass's weaknesses is actually pretty genius. And Trailblaze can make this Pokemon into a sweeper. I do wish Ayano had a better water move than Water Gun on her Belly Bolt, but having water in general and a Terra Electric Levitate Miss Magius with no weaknesses is definitely a plus. Kofu carries Pluck on Veluza to deal with Grass types, but Crobominable as an ace does perplex me a bit because it doesn't really cover for any common water checks. Larry having two moves on Star Raptor and neither being close combat is a big disappointment, but it does check against fighting types and overall his team is surprisingly competent. Rhyme actually has a pretty good team and strats all around, but it is kind of a shame that like Opal, the crowd giving out stat boosts can kinda ruin it. Tulip has two fairy types to deal with dark types, as well as Crunch and Shadow Ball, and her other two Pokemon to deal with ghost types, so she gets a passing grade. Which leaves only Grusha. And once again, the ice type gym leader is definitely the worst. First of all, I don't know why Game Freak had it snow in this area all the time, except during the gym battle. This could have made the fight an actual challenge and served to show off the brand new weather condition in a cool new way, but nope. Frostmoth doesn't even have its good ability, Beartech has good coverage, but like, it's Ooh. still a Beartech. Satitan with Liquidation is good, but is left wide open against Steel types. And Altaria, first of all, Altaria hasn't been a good Pokemon since like Gen 3, and although its moveset looks really impressive, you quickly realize that aside from Hurricane, none of these moves actually do anything to types that beat Ice. How does Brassius at Gym number 2 grasp the concept of an ace in the hole better than the 8th Gym Leader Grusha? That to me is the sad part. Ice Gym Leaders, the odds are already stacked against you, but you're not making your jobs any easier for yourselves with Pokemon like these.
So anyway, Ice Type Gym Leaders, I will be seeing you in the unemployment line. When the League sees this video, your days are numbered. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more videos just like this one, and I'll see you guys next time.